headlines on the daily. Joining me to do that is a lawyer, Suleiman Bashir. Thank you for joining us, sir. And uh, we'll go straight into it. And the headline on the standard this morning is the Raila. I know this is according to one of the opposition leaders, Musalia Mudavadi. And this is through a book that he has uh, written. And he is giving, you know, um, well, blow to blow accounts of what he knows about this political enigma, Raila Amolo Odinga. Amani National Congress leader describes his ODM counterpart as a risk taker who actions for confound uh, be both friends and foes. Suleiman, do you feel that uh, the book is describing Raila accurately? I think um, at the time within which this book is coming, it's coming at a time when. Uh, uh, Prime Minister, uh, former Prime Minister Raila Odinga has formed a new sort of dalliance with the current president, President Uhuru Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. He focuses on uh, the former Prime Minister in two senses. At some point, he refers to him as deceitful. Again, on the other, on the other part, he sees him as a great politician. Um, when you look at this, it tells you the position or the perception of Mudavadi of Raila at this stage. Right. It might affect the, any, any form of future alliance that, Raila, that Mudavadi might have. With Raila. With Raila. Yes. Uh, do you think that might be the case given that even in this particular description, uh, he gives an account of how Miguna Miguna came back, you know, to uh, be part of Raila which, uh, with the National Resistance Movement, uh, which was a surprise for all of them. And remember, it was just in the backdrop of Miguna Miguna also writing a book against Raila, uh, which one would have imagined that there would be enemies for life, but that didn't seem to be the case. The coming of Miguna Miguna into the picture has had its fair share of various versions. Uh, Honorable Raila gave us his own version, Kalonzo at some point gave us his version, and this Mudavadi's version. Mm. We do not really know who is telling the truth amongst them. Mm. Then the person who is at the epicenter of this is Nguna Nguna, who is out of the country, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And he's the one who is supposed to enjoy certain rights in this country as a, as, as a citizen of this um, country. Uh, whether or not he, joined, he, 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 he worked with Raila or not, it doesn't warrant the level of treatment that he enjoyed from the state. Mm. He is a citizen that is supposed to enjoy chapter four of this constitution that is supposed to be protected under the law just like i and you mm. so um but it's coming at the wake of again uh, uh miguna's uh, uh um uh, signs that he will, be, he will be interested in coming back to the country. Back, right. So this might even end up bringing his story back to the limelight and even push him to come back to Kenya. Mm. Yeah. All right, and it's also what forms the part, well, the headlines for the Daily Nation, how Miguna returns jo uh, rejolted NASA principle, again, according to a book that is being written uh, or has been written by Musalia Mudavadi. But what are your thoughts on the timing? of the release of this particular book. One might say, and there's, the, you know, there's a narrative that um, it is purely just a political uh, strategy to try and maybe malign Raila Odinga uh, as he prepares, maybe as Musalia prepares for 2022. At the moment, the biggest beneficiary, one of the biggest beneficiaries of this government is Honorable Raila Odinga. Uh, he has, to an extent, that he has uh, thrown uh, the deputy president out of the picture. Mm -hmm. So this tells you that uh, there, we might soon see uh, new alliances of maybe the deputy president Mudabadi at some point because of their position against Raila. Mm. Um, when you look at Raila at the moment, in, in, the, in the event that this state or the government of the day does not perform to a certain extent, that very same blame might also be 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 be, be forced on Raila's throat mm. because at the end of the day he is in the government to some extent. You know, mm. in as much as you know, we have the textbook theory and we also have the issues in practice. The theory that we have. On the law, uh, under the law, we do not have any docket that that has been assigned to Raila as such. But when you look at the reality, the, the picture on the ground, yeah. yes, and the way the things the things are run, he enjoys a certain state, a certain extent of power and influence. Mm. And when it comes to Kenyans accounting our leaders for the for the sort of work that they have done during this period, that very same blame might fall on the former prime minister on at some point. But the timing. I will, I will look at the, at the time uh, that this comes uh, into, in, in two senses. This autograph comes at the way, in the wake of uh, that alliance between Raila and Huru. Mm -hmm. And also, as we even expect that specific BBI report and a possible referendum at some point. This tells you that even in the event we end up having a referendum prior to the election, we, there, we, there will be these political formations that will be either pro-BBI or pro-referendum or anti-referendum. Uh, okay. And that will end up enjoying a certain uh, sense of force. Mm. All right, there are those who feel that uh, Musali Mudavadi has had a fantastic opportunity to come out 
right now as the opposition leader, uh, official opposition leader, even if not, um, you know, uh, officially, but in terms of actions. And this is, of course, as you've mentioned, by virtue of the fact that people feel the ODM leader, Raila Odinga, is now more or less part of government, uh, as much as he would say he's in the opposition. Do you think that Musale Mudavad is maybe taking that opportunity now to almost become the official, um, you know, opposition leader? The way to becoming an official opposition leader is not sharing autographs of the Mugun Muguna's position or Raila's attitude or behavior. The way to become a proper opposition leader is to castigate the government of the day on the basis of what's happening in this country, on the basis of the Kenyans who are losing lives uh, in the wake of these floods. On the floods. Yes. As we speak, we have cabinet secretaries who have been politicking, yet Kenyans have been losing lives. We have over 100 Kenyans who have been, who are, whose lives have been destroyed so far, whose houses have been destroyed. That is how our opposition leader takes, uh, takes a position on this. When you speak for national interest issues, that is how you are able to attract the interest of Kenyans, and that's how we can, we can picture you as, as an official opposition leader. Mm -hmm. But giving us uh, not autographs of uh, Raila and your relationship with him and how you view him, at this time, no, at this time it, and it, point, it, that's it, not the rightful That's position. not the right formula. All right, and uh, well, uh, for you to get just snippets and bits and pieces of what that particular book is all about, get yourself a copy of The Standard. Uh, the headline on The Standard is The Raila I Know, The Daily Nation, is How Miguna's Return Jolted NASA Principle. And that's a story, of course, that many will continue to read. I remember the point where Miguna Miguna also released his book. It was um, quite popular. And again, uh, you know, this man, Raila, just seems to provoke a lot of conversation. The minute you write a book that talks about him, there seems to be a certain interest in Kenyans just to know who this man is. You see, um, good or, or bad, there's nothing like bad publicity. Good or bad, it's good for this specific personality. When you have your name on... Uh, on Two dailies, yes, on so, the headlines. Yes, again, these are the leading dailies in the country. That tells you that this is a big deal in the coming days. So, uh, the way even, uh, I think, Raila, when he, when he walks by or drives by the stands this morning, he'll smile. When he sees his name splashed on the front pages of the leading dailies. Mm. So, this tells you that... For, for, for the, way they, the way they view these issues, for them, they are so happy. And this morning, by the way, if you walk in the, in the central business of Nairobi, you will see Kenyans who have, um, who have come around, uh, standing around the, 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 the newspaper vending stalls, mm. reading the, 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 the headlines and debating and amongst probably debating them. in yes, but the, but, Yes, but this tells you that in as much as Mudavadi might have been interested in drawing an autograph, trying to, to, to picture Raila in a very bad light, this might end up serving... It may Raila actually like work for sense. Raila. Yes. All right, and uh, well, let's move on to other stories there. You already have it on the de headlines, and uh, do get yourself a copy. Let's look at page three. And um, apparently, principals switch off phones as parents look for vacancies. And this is after the government announced placement of uh, KCPE students. This, again, of course, is a departure from the norm. Previously, students would actually go to, uh, for Christmas holidays without knowing where they're going to be placed. But the Ministry of Education has really changed this. Results come out in record time. Now they've even placed students such that by the time parents are uh, breaking off for Christmas, they already know where their children are likely to report to come January. But principals have been inundated with calls by virtue of the fact that one of the things that has happened is that some students have been placed in counties very far from where they are. And of course, that has caused a bit of a storm on the parents' uh, part. Normally, when students are, are making their choices, when these pupils are making their choices for the secondary schools, they had an opportunity to use to to maybe um, uh, make the first, second, and third choices. Right. Maybe in, uh, on the base of county schools or non-county schools, or even sub-county schools. At the end of the day, this is the time that if you walk to the office of the principal secretary in charge of education, you will see so many parents lining up there to try and have an opportunity mm -hmm. with him. Normally, this is an uh, uh, in, in the work. I mean, at the time that uh, we have had the, 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 the ministry giving us the specific secondary schools that have been given to these uh, pupils, it's quite interesting. This is because we should not look at it in a very negative sense. This will, have an, this will prepare the parents to put in place an amount of school fees for their children. Initially, look at it this way. Um, these specific choices were coming out, let's say, in mid-January or even early February. That late. That is the time when the parents were already done with the fe with the festive season. The, uh, at times, that is the time then uh, that will say that they were quite broke or they were financial they were, they, that they were in a certain level of financial distress. Mm -hmm. At the moment, 
the ministry has given the parents enough opportunity or an opportunity to go organize themselves. Well, they cannot argue at this stage that they have, that they have uh, utilized they all the... Aware. Yes, mm -hmm. that they are not aware. But at the end of the day, these are serious concerns. Mm. Parents normally are interested in having their children or their students go into specific secondary uh, schools on specific reasons. Perhaps uh, they're able to afford the transport to a certain extent. Perhaps they know that certain schools are quite, they have this quality education. Mm. At the end of the day, parents, while parents might have preferences, the ministry is equally forced to share these little opportunities with the thousands of uh, people who are now who have just finished this, the primary schools. Mm. Well, the CS uh, for Education, CS Magoha, did mention and he said to parents that, uh, or to students rather, that it was almost uh, committing academic suicide by not choosing the schools. And as a result, the ministry had no choice but to place them uh, according to where availability was there. But do get yourself a copy of the uh, standard and read that story. But a story that we may have, uh, you know, sort of uh, jumped uh, on page two just to get your comments brace yourself for more rains warns the weatherman and we're going to be discussing this on the state of the nation but it it's perturbing to imagine or think that we seem to never be prepared regardless of how much warning we have that floods are going to come up this is still uh, a test of our level or extent of disaster preparedness in this country um, in the event we have floods in the event we have drought at all times, we end up losing lives. That is when we end up having reactions such as Kenyans for Kenyans. Mm. So at the end of the day, this is again a test on the part of the government to see how far or how the extent at which we have prepared ourselves to counter such disasters. Already, we have lost hundreds of Kenyans. We should not have waited for such losses to occur. The government should ought to have foreseen all this. The meteorological department has been giving timely updates on its social media pages mm. of the expected uh, levels of rain. Of rain. Yes. So uh, we cannot say that the government has been caught up in uh, in a very funny uh, position. No. Where they did not know. Yes. So um, if and if we do not react to this, we will end up uh, losing a lot of Kenyans. I had uh, an opportunity to be in Tana River County mm -hmm. lately. I can tell you a number of thousands of residents of Tana River who who lived around the Tana River Delta had been forced to seek for, uh, for, for places to maybe reside around, within Garissa County. And the other night, I think there was a notice on the part of, um, on the, part of the, 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 those who take care of the dams that one of the dams, I think it's Masinga Dam, that the, 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 there's this level of water that's going to be released into River Tana. Mm -hmm. And that is again going to cause more and more troubles for Kenyans. But it is very important that the government has equally been giving instructions to Kenyans. They have been warning them. The CS for Interior has time and again reminded Kenyans to move away from high-risk areas. Right. We have always waited and we have always expected or sit, sit, sat back to wait for these disasters to take place. I can tell you, the CS yesterday evening when he was, I think, is it Makweni? Mm. That, that is again, he, that's the time he insisted that those again living around Tana Delta or specific areas. Should there are these high risk areas that have been mapped out. Citizens have been urged to move away from these areas. And I can tell you, these Kenyans will still remain on those areas until this disaster. Uh, takes place. Yes. Very unfortunate. And we've already lost over 134 lives uh, to the floods and uh, the rainfall that has uh, pounded the country in the last, uh, well, in the not too distant past. And according to the Med Department, we should expect more. But like I mentioned, on State of the Nation, we're going to be looking at this and getting more details of what that means. Page 9 of the Standard is an interesting story. State accountant to return 113 million wealth. Now, we are accused often of highlighting when uh, the EACC and uh, the judiciary and all those arms of government are not doing much in regards to the war on graft. But this particular case seems to be different. Uh, there is a gentleman here uh, who is supposed to return over 100 million because he cannot uh, explain how he got the wealth. I think we just do not need to appreciate the, the DCI and the DPP, but we need to appreciate the anti-corruption court. It is the anti-corruption court that has presided over this matter and has listened to all the parties before it made such a decision. Mm. But uh, in, 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 uh, in conducting or in uh, having such a favorable outcome for the state, is, uh, it is three-leveled. At the DCI level, ordinary proper investigations, auto, I think in this case, have taken place. So this specific uh, guitar or this citizen, he must, his matter must have been investigated properly by the Department of Criminal Investigation. Mm. That file 
with a proper, with or with good grounds of prosecuting this matter, it has been forwarded to the office of the DPP. Looking at it, on the prima facie, the DPP was able to establish that, the, that the, we have a case here that warrants prosecution. That file had been, let's say, forwarded to the office of the, I mean, to the, to the anti-corruption court and the, and the, and the, and the, the Directorate of, of Public Prosecution in this case has properly played its role. And this tells you that where the courts, when we have good investigations, courts give just give. justiciable outcomes. We should not just blame the courts. This is one instance out of hundreds of cases that the courts have convicted or ordered for certain uh, recoveries to be made against specific, suspect, uh, specific defendants. Mm. Now, when we look at a case like this, and it seems to have been well done right from investigation level to judiciary and all that, does it leave us with a question mark as to when this is not properly done, whether that's by design? Um, Th that might be the case because at times we have a uh, bit we have these prosecutors who bungle up cases mm. we have these investigators investigators who equally do shoddy work but look at it this way every single day when a prosecutor walks to court and i have a matter as a private counsel when i when i come to that court this prosecutor has um, a cost list of about 55 matters that will be coming up. Let's say of these 55 matters, 23 are coming up for mentions and 20 are coming up for hearings. And this one single prosecutor who is in that court. Whilst all these parties, 80% of them have advocates of the High Court of Kenya, mm -hmm. who might even have more years of experience than that prosecutor. That tells you that uh, the extent to, at which that office is quite grappling with, the, with, it, with, the, with staffing issues and or, or even maybe with finances. On the other hand, we have we have instances within which when you even go to court, we normally hear or we see a, DP, a prosecutor standing in court and even telling the magistrate or the judge that, Your Honor, I wish to have this matter adjourned for the last time. And that's quite interesting. When a prosecutor makes such an application in a court of law, it tells us as private counsels that something somewhere is not it's right. Mm. Yeah. So at all times, we have certain cases that are bungled up, certain cases that are not done properly, whilst you have some that are done properly and we have such outcomes. But let me allow me to just add this, to add on this. Yesterday we have had a CS who had appeared before the DCI. Mm. We, ha we have specific former cabinet secretaries who are now before the anti-corruption court. Kenyans normally expect the justice to be, or convictions to be made the following day. If you look at this case, it's a case that has taken quite a From while. 2017. Yes, equally, we should give the courts proper time, we should encourage the office of the DPP and the DCI to do its work, and once we have that, the outcome will be quite Will be something that uh, at least is just. On page 10, the BBI uh, you know, debate continues and rages on, and a very angry president yesterday uh, at the launch of a hospital in Kiambu County came out to make it very clear that he is not pleased at all with those who are opposing the BBI report. Actually, from his statement, he says that those who had been uh, running around the country before the report was released, and now we still have them running around. You see, um, this is a recommendation. This, this, this is just basically a recommendation. At the National Assembly, there are two levels of, uh, according to the standing orders and in accordance with the laws, that's the Constitution, there are two ways that we might have a specific legislation brought to the House. This might be on the base of an amendment bill, or a bill by itself, or a report that has been prepared by a departmental committee of the National Assembly, mm. or a bill that has been prepared by an ordinary citizen that is forwarded to the House that goes through a specific, that, that goes through a set of stages under the standing orders. What we have at the moment, these are basically recommendations. This is an opportunity to give Kenyans to read the 156-page document to, to appreciate what it provides. These are basically aspirations for now. This, and, uh, and I think my view of it is, um, is uh, it's, not, um, it's a means to an end, but it's not an end. It's not the end. Yes. Mm. So uh, when the president, I think, uh, tries to, 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 to address specific persons or politicians who are oppo opposed to the BBI, I think it is, I think he's, he's quite concerned that it's quite frustrating his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, efforts. Uh, his efforts in maybe making it real or making that specific dream of, of, of accomplishing the Big Four agenda true. Right now, in the event he ends up politicking on the base of the BBI, he will lose track and he will be at a loss. Mm -hmm. So um, his concerns come at the right time. The Speaker of the National Assembly has given his version of the story in the sense that there's a specific document that can only be introduced to the House. And I think going forward, this should be the case. Let us not debate on these things politically. Let us give Kenyans an opportunity to appreciate it.
I had been to the government printers. This document is not even available uh, on hard copy. Oh, it's not available. Yeah. Yes, so I, I think the leaders should rather print it mm. and give it to the Mamamboga in the market. Mm. If you will again allow me to maybe comment on again page 10 of the standard, there's the, that story on Uhuru and Raila, mm. allies defending a cabinet secretary. Mm. I think it's really important that we follow the law. Mm -hmm. What the BBI report has partly said was that this is not just a dysfunctional government, but we are a dysfunctional society. Mm. The constitution of our republic provides for the office of the deputy president, the mandate of the deputy president, and the mandate of the head of state, and chapter seven that equally provides for office, I mean for the mandate of the cabinet. Mm. When you look at um, the specific CS that is who is now in question, and we are having a faction of, a faction of MPs who at all times come to the fourth to defend him, article, one article uh, um, uh, 147 of the Constitution lists the deputy president as the principal assistant to the head of state and that at all times he would help the president or assist the president in undertaking his duties. Mm. Article 132 gives us, the, the head, uh, gives us the powers of the head of state. Article 153 tells us that all cabinet secretaries shall be accountable to the president. It is the president who can fire them or even dismiss them. This doesn't mean that the deputy president, who is the principal assistant to the president, does not have a mandate over the cabinet secretaries. He, when you look at Article 152, on the, on the base within which the, the members of the cabinet are listed, it starts with the president, the deputy president. It shows you his, his place. Structure. When you again read Article 153, we are told, Article 132, 131, sorry, the president will be assisted in undertaking his cabinet, cabinet duties by the deputy president and by the cabinet ministers. Mm. So I think at all times we cannot wish away the place and influence of the deputy president with respect to the CSS. All right, and uh, according to that, well, the Daily Nation, Uhuru terms BBI critics as directionless, and that is, of course, as he went out ranting and raving yesterday in Kiambu, uh, basically coming out to say that by January they will have to face the music according to him, and we'll wait to see what that music is. On page 8, we have another story and this is to do with matters uh, graft. Water CS now being treated as suspect in Itare Dam scam. Uh, the dams, of course, have been up in question for a while. And uh, Chelugui spent the day yesterday being interviewed and being interrogated. And he says that the payments were made by his PS who is also to be questioned. Again, we go back to uh, how much time is given to investigation, how thorough those investigations are done, and the different arms of government to work together to ensure that if it is a matter that needs to be dealt with, it is dealt with uh, you know, fairly, but at the same time also in good time. When you and I even can even be summoned by the DCI to share specific information on certain issues. When you have the Water Cabinet Secretary who has been summoned by the, by the, by the DCI, it doesn't mean that there is something as such that we can conclude at the moment. Right. Calling or summoning anyone is basically supposed to share information that will aid the, the, these specific sleuths in mm. concluding a certain investigative process. When, cabinet, when, the, when the CS has, uh, once the CS has appeared, Mm -hmm. As Kenyans, we already conclude that he's guilty as charged. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case. Let us expect that uh, proper investigation shall take place and proper uh, prosecution that will lead to uh, final convictions on this shall take place. All right. And as we wind up, there's also a story, County News, on page 19 of the nation. Matatu operators oppose city halls, revised parking charges. And, of course, this is a matter that was halted and suspended by the court as per yesterday. Uh, parking fees had changed, particularly in the CBD. It was going to be doubled to 400 shillings, and there was also the zoning that had been done. Uh, your thoughts on possibly how long this should take? Uh, uh, you know, a sigh of relief, but very temporary maybe for motorists, particularly in the CBD. This is again another time that Kenyans appreciate the place of the courts and the judiciary as, uh, in general. Um, the court has come to, to, to save Kenyans from the double uh, uh, parking fees that will have been charged on them. This is basically uh, what happens is when COFEC has uh, an, made an application to the court, the court has ordered that specific amount of uh, uh, parking fees should not be added in this case pending the outcome of this specific, pending the decision of this matter. 
this tells us that this, that's not the final. That is basically sort of a, a specific short process that the court has given us to enable this matter to be, to be, to be completed with, uh, uh, within the reasonable time. I think I can tell you for a fact that in the event we will have had a system that will have run for us properly, whereby we can easily park our cars in a safe place, our cars will not be damaged or our laptops will not, will not be stolen. Mm -hmm. Good roads that will enable us that, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to easily get in to access the CBD to again, um, um, not to suffer sort of the sort of the matatu industry, what it's doing on our roads. I can tell you in Nairobi town, at the CBD right now, we, we are not, you cannot easily access, if you're a motorist, uh, Tomboya or Moya Avenue. Those two streets have now gone to the dogs. It's like, the, it's like those two streets are not part of Nairobi County. This tells us that Kenyans are not appreciating the, the place or what the county government has done for us. In the event, the county government of Nairobi will have done a good job, in the sense that all motorists will have enjoyed conducive environment that they, whereby they are not suffering tough, tra uh, tough traffic process, mm. uh, safe on our safety, cars. Um, damage that's again occasioned by third parties that you're, not, that you're not even aware of. And when you again go to go parking, when, when, you, when you look for a parking zone within the CBD, we normally find a number of boys who are standing there who will ask you for a little amount of money. Mm. We equally have these rogue city county officials who will tell you that let us not issue with a, with a ticket, the ticket, but instead just pay us a little amount and we shall, we shall allow you to park your car. The moment we clear all this uh, of our parking areas, in fact the motorists will be at ease and happy to pay to whatever, pay amount. whatever amount yes. they ask. But let me, uh, let me add this, the proper ground or the ground within which the court looked at this issue is that it's within under Article 10 of our constitution. Article 10 provides for the concept or the principle of public participation. It was devoid of that. The city county woke up one morning and decided to increase, increase the parking the amount. So this equally warns the government in general, both the county and the national government, that at all times, if you omit specific values and principles that are enshrined in Article 10, the courts as the protectors of justice will be there for Kenyans. All right, thank you very much, Suleiman uh, Bashir, for joining us this morning. And uh, well,